Hello, everybody, and <coughs> sorry, welcome to your next SML 2.0 tutorial. And in this tutorial, we are going to be learning about uh, the time class. This is going to be a fairly easy tutorial, so I hope you guys really enjoy it. Okay, so if we do, uh, first of all, um, the time is part of the SF namespace, just like most other things with SFML. So we do call SF um, colon colon time. And with every class, we can create an instance. So I'll just um, name this instance time. Now, when we create a time, we can set it equal to one of three things. We can set it to a microsecond, a millisecond, or a second, right? And, um... In this case, I will set it to uh, S of seconds, and we'll set a certain amount of seconds. So I, I guess I'll put in two seconds, okay? And so, <coughs> sorry, if we include IO stream at the top right here, let us do STDCL. And if I was to do this, we should be able to display the time, right? But that this is not how it works. So the we cannot just display a time by calling the actual time. We actually have to display how we're going to display the time. So in this case, we set that um, our time is equal to two seconds, but that doesn't mean we're actually we actually want to display it as seconds. It just means we're storing two seconds in it. What if we want to display two seconds as um, what if we want to display two seconds in milliseconds? What if we want to display two seconds in microseconds? It depends. We have to decide which one we want to display it as. And that's why we can use a method called as microseconds, as milliseconds, or as seconds. So if I say time dot as seconds, then what that will do is that it will display whatever time I have inputted as as seconds so uh, let's run this just to see what we get and as we can see we get the value 2 over there okay so we got the value 2 so now if we change this and we say time as milliseconds then let's see what we get we had the value 2,000, so 2, 000, there's 2,000 milliseconds in 2 seconds. And if we do it as microseconds, run this, we get uh, 2 million microseconds in 2 seconds. So <laughs> we can decide whichever way we want to uh, display it as, right? So this is just setting a value to it, right? Or, or putting a value in it and this is how we're going to display it so the now now it becomes can we add or subtract to do arithmetic with it yes we can so we can say time plus equals uh, sf seconds or sf milliseconds um, let's put 2000 right and therefore if we display this as seconds it should say that we have a total of four seconds and as we can see we have a total of four seconds so uh we can also do minus equals um or if we have another time so if we have another sf time and we say sf milliseconds and we put two thousand there we can say plus equals if we name it time two, we can say plus equals time two. So just like we use arithmetic with the regular va variables, we can use arithmetic to add two different times together. Okay? And <coughs> so we're going to end with uh, that there. So now one quick thing before we end is that we're going to look at the SF clock. And if we look at the SF clock, uh, we create a clock instance, right? Now, when we use clock and we use the dot operator, we can see two things. We see get elapsed time and we see uh, restart. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say SF time and we're going to name it time is equal to clock 
dot get elapsed time and you know what we're gonna do actually we'll right here uh in our game loop we're gonna say time is equal to uh clock dot get elapsed time okay we're going to display that as seconds and then we're going to call clock dot restart now let's run this so what get elapsed time does is that it gets the the time that has passed since the last um uh, from the last starting point so if we were to comment this out right here what get what get elapsed time will return is how much time has we've been running this actual program for right because it gets the elapsed time since the um since the pro um since the clock was created and since we created it at the beginning of the program then whenever we make a call to get elapsed time then it's going to get the elapsed time since we created that clock which will give us the amount of time since the program started now when we call clock dot restart this will give us the amount of time that has passed from the last frame and this is going to be very important to us whenever we um, get into um, some player movement and stuff like that but one thing to know is that clock.restart also returns the uh, uh, the timestamp before it actually resets this uh, restarts the clock so we can easily just call time is equal to clock.restart so we don't have to do two different things and we will get <clears throat> we will get the same result so instead of having instead of taking up two different lines for that we can have it all under one line so i'm going to end this tutorial here if there was any confusion don't forget to um you can feel free to comment below uh so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh don't forget to comment and subscribe and that's it for now so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this and bye